Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to, let's see what my, uh, my description of the day will be. Welcome to another riveting section of OLC 4.0, Term 2B, brought to you by Wassa Distance Education Center. I'm your instructor, Mike Laverty, and today's date is Monday. May the 8th, 2023. We are on class 20, uh, sorry, class 13. And we will be uh, moving on to unit 2 of OLC 4.0. So the first three weeks of this course covered um, the first unit of OLC 4.0, which just, let me pull up my handy dandy list here. So, um, our first unit, unit number one, is reading and writing for personal success. So in unit one, there was a, a lot of focus on, on you and uh, reflecting upon your own learning in this chorus, before you took this chorus, and, and, that, and that's a really important component of OLC 4.0 is you're taking a look at your own abilities your own skills as a reader and a writer. And I just wanted to mention that, you know, a lot of students that I see, um, well, I guess that I don't actually see, but a lot of students submitting work sometimes have, like, um, I, I think they might be too critical of their own abilities and they, and they might not give themselves enough credit, right? So they... Um, so I, I want to just reach out to everybody out there who, who's trying their best. You know, I'm, I'm hoping that I can support you in your reading and writing journey. You know, don't be too hard on yourself. You just got to find a way to, to keep moving forward. And, and the best way to do that is to just, you know, get some work out to your teacher. That's myself. And I will do my best to, to grade it and get it back to you as quickly as possible. And then I will give you some feedback on your assignments and, and kind of give you that, that push to kind of keep moving forward. So, so that was the focus of unit one, was reading and, and writing for, for personal success. And then now we're moving on to unit two, which is voices uh, through reading and writing. So, so, through, so through unit two, we will continue our discussion of... of our novel, Jimmy Comes Home. And we're also going to have a look at some other sources. So we'll be looking at um, uh, different, um, you know, diff different ways that literacy is expressed, you know, through, through um, advertising. Uh, today's lesson we'll talk about through brochures. So we're going to be talking a lot about purpose and 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 who our audience is and just what we're trying to achieve with our writing but let's get on with the show here's some important dates to keep in mind this is week four of term 2b and for all you potential grads out there just know that the deadline for submitting work is june the 9th so that's you know just a month and a day right so if you want to graduate in 2023 then you have to have all your work submitted by June the 9th. Uh, other students have a deadline of June 16th for submitting work in this course. So that's if you want to complete your coursework for term 2B. You can also register for the summer term. So you got to keep that in mind, right? So if you don't have all your work submitted and your final exam booked by June 16th, then you are registering for the summer term and you can continue to work on this course and then Someone else who's not me will be taking over and grading your assignments. And then you can complete this course over the summer. So I just wanted to, to keep those deadlines um, um, in your minds. I'm going to keep reminding you of, uh, of that. So you, you can't carry your work over to next school year. So that's a really important thing to keep in mind. You have to have it done either by... June 9th if you're if you want to graduate, June 16th if you want to finish off in this term, or you got to have your work sent in over the summer. Otherwise, you're starting from scratch in September. So I don't want to see students who have already put the work in 
have to start from scratch in September. Okay, so we did cover Unit 1 in Weeks 1, 2, and 3. We'll cover Unit 2 in the next two weeks, so Weeks 4 and 5. We will be discussing our Unit 2 assignments and everything you need to be successful in this chorus and in Unit 2. Then we'll have two weeks to talk about Unit 3, and then two weeks to talk about Unit 4, and then probably, you know, uh, at least one or two, maybe three days to, to get you ready to write the final exam. So thank you for, for listening in. If you're, if you're listening um, to us on the radio, that's 91.9 FM, broadcasting out of here in Sulacout and to many northern communities. We are live every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and you can phone us at 1-800-465-7144 or locally at 1-807-737-4017. You can also listen on Bell Express View, channel 972, and you can find us on Zoom. So if you have the Zoom application on your phone, you can just do that, or go to zoom.us on any device join the meeting and then enter 417-6699-799. That's our meeting ID. Of course, all these videos are uploaded to my YouTube channel. So go to Laverty Space Wassa. Go to my playlist and check out the OLC40 playlist. They're all up there just waiting for you. If you've got any questions on how to submit work, um, please talk to me. Talk to your local DEC at your learning center. You can phone the WASA office. There's many ways you can submit assignments. I can be reached at mlaverty at nnecschools.org or find me on Facebook. That's Laverty WASA, L-A-V-E-R-T-Y space WASA. Please phone the WASA office uh, toll free at one 800 Six six seven three seven zero three, and talk to one of our staff members. We are here to help, and we can answer any questions you may have, especially any questions you may have um, about graduation, your your path to getting your high school diploma, and um, and those deadlines I mentioned at the start of the class. So here's your suggested progress. Um, please reach out to your teacher by email, phone, or messenger. That's myself. Um, you should have completed all the assignments in lesson one of unit one, so, so not all of unit one, but the first lesson. You should have uh, assignments one through five completed by this point. You should have read or skimmed the unit two handout and read the first chapters of our novel, Jimmy Comes Home. So chapters one to three would be great if you could have those read by now. All right, so here's today's lesson. We'll be doing our words of the day as we usually do. We will be looking at a headline, and then we'll be delving into um, assignment 19. So we're just doing the one assignment today. It is, a, um, it is a significant one because it is worth 30 marks, which is, um, you know, which is big in, in the grand scheme of things. You know, it's more, it's about, uh, you know, it's more than 10% of your final grade in this course. Um, yeah, yeah, so that's Unit 2, Lesson 6, Assignment 19. That's the uh, brochures. Your learning goals for today are to learn about brochures and how they are designed and review Assignment 19, which is you making your own brochure. So your success criteria will be to complete Assignment 19 after you learn about creating brochures, right? So that's what you're doing today is you're just taking notes, getting some ideas, and hopefully planning out your your brochure. All right, so let's get to our words of the day. So if you're on the air listening, I will uh, do my best to explain what's on the screen. So I, I've, I picked up some, some famous public service announcements, um, some famous posters. So, so these aren't brochures, but the reason why I'm discussing them is that they are examples of people combining words and images to send a message and th and that's really what we're talking about today so that's that's what a that that's what a brochure 
basically comes down to, right? It's it's this combination of you know visual elements. It's um, it's a combination of of words and images to to really grab a reader's attention um, and and to grab their attention quickly and to you know to to get them to do something or to look into something or motivate them to do something right so so brochures and advertisements you know they're not the same thing but they're 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 almost the same thing and up on the screen we've got a an advertisement for for um it's a public service announcement or a PSA that is telling people to not text and drive. So the text reads PLS DNT TXD plus drive. So please don't text and drive. So they've actually used texting short forms in the advertisement. So so the way you use your letters um, and the way you use your words in a brochure is important, right? So using big, bold, eye-catching fonts is really important, right? You want to you want to use different sizes of text, right? So you want to have the really important stuff in big or bold, eye-catching letters, and the other stuff sort of um, the you know your your other information is going to be in smaller text. We've got the famous Smokey Bear, um, only you can prevent forest fires. And we've got a um, a kind of a funny uh, E.T. You know, this is definitely from my generation. Um, if you go beyond your limit, please don't drive. Phone home. So if you haven't seen the E.T. movie, you know, it's about this, this alien who wants to go home. And that was sort of the catchphrase of the movie was phone home, right? So that's a famous uh, commercial. Uh, a an advertisement brought to you by your friends at Coors Light. So you can find lots of examples of, of famous advertisements and brochures, and you can get all kinds of inspiration just by, you know, looking at a social media feed, you know, looking through an online magazine, that kind of thing, right? So, and, I, and I'm going to put up some examples up on the screen too. So. Here's our words of the day. So once again, I don't speak the Anishinaabe Moan language, but I like to incorporate some of the words into our into our into our lessons. So I, I do my best to pronounce these words correctly, but I apologize if my pronunciation is not 100% uh, accurate. So gina amau is a verb, which means to forbid or to warn against. And in English, we have the word warn, which is to inform someone in advance of a possible danger, problem, or other unpleasant situation. So the brochures that you're going to create are, in a sense, warnings, okay? They're, they're trying to raise awareness about issues that could really make someone's life um, go downhill, right? So, so like teenage pregnancy... And, and drug and alcohol abuse and, and violent criminal behavior and just, you know, things that people should um, avoid or if, if they're suffering from it, it sort of gives them um, a path forward. And I think that's a really important thing to, to talk about, right? So, you know, I, I think the brochures that you're creating, they're, they're, they're sort of like kind and compassionate. And it's not like, you know, don't do these don't do these things because then that makes you a bad person. I think that was kind of the approach that people used to take with public service announcements and brochures. And I think now, I think now the focus is more like, you know what, you're having a hard time. You are, um, you know, you're doing things that are negatively impacting your life. Here's how we can help. And, and here's how we can show you um, a better path. And I think that's really important, right? So when people are struggling, when people have mental health and addictions issues, it's important to not shame them and, and not to judge them. And to they, you know, they don't need any shame and judgment because uh, I guarantee you they've, they've, they've got that. Um, the brochure it should really be like a, a path forward, right? It should be like a way to get help and and that's something I really want to emphasize with your brochures, right? That's what you're doing is like, here's how, here's how you can help. But that being said, they, they also are warnings, right? They are, 
Um, y you have to sort of like get people's attention and be like, look, the path you're on can lead to some pretty dark stuff. But at the same time, it's like, I'm going to show you how to find that better way, that better path in life. Here's some English words. Um, we have forbidden, which means not allowed or banned. Um, the forbidden degrees, um, the forbidden fruit. You know, you may, you may have heard that phrase before. Um, this is from the Old English, for, which means literally, which means against, which is kind of funny. Um, and bioden, which is to command. Um, uh, in German, it's in when things are forbidden, they are forboden. Caution, so this is care taken to avoid danger or mistakes, a warning. You can err on the side of caution. And awareness, so knowledge or perception of a situation or fact. Concern about and well-informed interest in a particular situation or development. From the Old English, wadian, which is observe or take care. So that's another really key word is awareness. You, your brochure is meant to create awareness. You're trying to um, make someone aware of something. And and get their attention and, and just show them that there's a better path out there. All right, so here's our article of the day. How an Inuit factory producing modular homes aims to ease Nunavut's housing shortage. On the outskirts of the Nunavut hamlet of Arviet, past the polar bear alert signs and the pack to the raptors school and the community freezer full of caribou meat, lies a gravel pad on which an Inuit company is building something unprecedented. That's a great word. So unprecedented means it has no precedent, means it hasn't happened before. So I love that word, unprecedented. Some, some words are just fun to say. Here's our headline. So even though we're talking about brochures, your brochure will feature writing. And I want to just you know spend at least a little bit of each class talking about ways we can understand the English language on a deeper level. So how an Inuit factory producing modular homes, so it's a it's not just any factory, it's an Inuit factory. So Inuit in this case is an adjective that modifies the word factory. Verb is what they're is the what they are doing, in this case producing. And what are they producing? They're producing homes, but they're special homes, they are modular homes. So um, how is an adverb and adverbs tell us how an action is done, and they also modify um, entire sentences or, or groups of words. Aims to ease Nunavut's housing shortage. So aims is something you can do. Preposition is a, is a, um, is a relationship word. So, um, so to, from, those are prepositions because they tell us where something's going or where it's coming from. They aim to ease, that's another action. And it's not just, it's, it's a housing shortage, but it's, it's a housing shortage that belongs to Nunavut. And that's why we have the apostrophe S. So when something belongs to something, we use the apostrophe S. So my dog's leash, you know, D-O-G apostrophe S, or Nunavut's housing shortage. So Nunavut apostrophe S. Here's our lead paragraph. It's a great one. Okay, on the outskirts of the Nunavut hamlet of Ari. So I, I already read that, but there, there it is up on the screen. So I want I want to break down how this writer wrote this lead paragraph. Okay, so they used an introductory phrase, and this is this is something I want you to employ. I want you to use this in your own writing. Okay, so the intro introductory phrase here, which is followed by a comma, is on the outskirts of the Nunavut hamlet of Arviet, comma, um, and then. After the comma, they give a whole bunch of great details. Um, past the polar bear alert signs and the pack to the rafter schools and the community freezer full of caribou meat. So they, they, they w they're, they're painting a picture with their words, okay? So you've got, you know, like up here in the north, we have moose signs on our highways. They have polar bear signs on their highways. Um, pack to the rafter schools. So you've got a schoolhouse packed full of kids and you've got a community freezer full of caribou meat. So you've got these three details meant to sort of um, let you imagine what life in the north is like, the far north. Um, lies a gravel pad on which an Inuit company is building something unprecedented. So that's a, that's a great opening sentence. Um, uh, sorry, a, a, 
I mean, and that is that is all one sentence. If you look at it, that, that's a very long sentence, and um, that's what a skilled writer can do, and and that's something that that you could kind of work towards. And it, it's just kind of it's fun for me to kind of break down these these um, these sentences and see how they're built. So we have an int introductory phrase, then we have a noun phrase, and everything in the middle is telling us what life in Arviat is like, right? It's just a further explanation. And then we have, um, you know, um, a further explanation. So on the outskirts of Nunavut, Hamlet, there's a gravel pad in which they're building something that is unprecedented. Okay. So let's get on to um, today's lesson. So we are creating a brochure. So this is assignment 19 um, assignment 19, creating a brochure, unit 2, lesson 6, and it's worth 30 marks. So it's an important one. Um, you know, most assignments aren't worth 30 marks, but this one is. So I emphasize that because I'd like you to, to take your time with this assignment. You know, just, you know, really put the work into it and it, it for any of these assignments, I if you're having trouble completing them, you know, reach out to me, and um, I, I can help you out. And and that's why, that's why I'm doing these these classes where where I take like a deep dive into into one assignment. But you know, if you have any questions about any of these assignments, you know, you got to reach out to me, and I'll explain them to you in further detail. But you know. This one, it, it, it does take a bit of time to, to complete. So let, let's dive into it, okay? So for this assignment, you are creating a six-panel brochure that will help the reader deal with an important issue. So we've got three potential options here, okay? So we've got staying in school, graduating high school. We've got uh, teenage parenthood, right? Um, or the dangers of drug and alcohol. Um, you can also choose another issue that the young characters in Jimmy Comes Home are facing, right? So you could pick one of those three options, or you could pick, you know, another um, another issue that the young characters in this novel are facing. So one suggestion that I w I would recommend to you, and that other students have done, is you know, there's mental health. You know, mental health and, you know, like seeking out therapy, um, counseling. You know, we've got, um, you know, it's, it's a very serious novel. You know, you've got um, a suicide in the novel. So you've got these young characters who are struggling with their mental health and they need help. And, you know, it's a pretty stark example but it, it's very first and foremost in the book you know you've got um you, you've got you know you've got jimmy and he's got his anger issues right and it's like you know what what does jimmy need to um you know to get himself healthy and and back on the right path because that's that's really what the novel's about right it's, it's like jimmy is coming home but, you know, like, is, you know, how is he going to, how is he going to get, you know, back into his community, right? And how is he going to, um, you know, how is he going to get welcome back? And, and you know, and how is he, how is Jimmy going to get better, right? So, so think about that, right? And then um, another, another key piece of information here is this concept of the reader, okay? So, so when you're writing, um, as much as possible, like I know that your your primary audience is is your teacher, is myself, and you know I'm the one that's going to be reading your work and grading your work and giving you feedback. So I'm definitely a very important audience um, that you have for your writing. But I, I as much as possible, I really want you to imagine. Um, who your reader is going to be. I want you to think about someone who, who needs help. I want you to think about someone 
who's troubled and, and, and struggling and they're young and then it's you know it's it's not like a brochure is, is going to save their life but your brochure can can lead this young person to to someone else or they c- it can lead them to an organization or it can just start it can just start them on the path uh, of getting better right so so think about your reader think about your audience think about the kind of person who who is going to read this and you know what's going to get their attention and you know um maybe lead them to make some better choices in their life and to talk about what's happening to themselves and you know all those good things all right your brochure must include the following elements so this is crucial okay so with all of these writing assignments so not you know so w- i'm not just talking about this assignment but any assignment in OLC 40 and you know pretty much any assignment you're doing for any course there it's it's going to be asking you you know to do certain things and, and and it's up to you to read those requirements and excuse me <laughs> sometimes we give you a checklist or you have like a rubric which sort of like tells out it lists out the expectations that we have of you as a student for that assignment but your brochure you know it's got to have these follow following elements so if you want to get 30 out of 30 and just knock it out of the park and or or get close to those full marks you got to have all these th- so you need agencies or organizations that that can help people who are facing your issue or topic you can list real ones or you can use your imagination to create a fictional company right so you need agencies or organizations so your brochure is directing people to groups and companies that can help them you need several important details that are relevant to your chosen topic right so staying in school graduating high school teenage parenthood the dangers of drug and alcohol abuse right so you need several important details that are relevant to your chosen topic your brochure needs your name and your home community on it okay so most brochures are divided into into six pages right um six pages or six panels right so depending on how you look at it um it, it it's divided into six parts so there is a single sheet of paper that's folded into three panels or pages and both the front and the back have content okay so so that's how it's laid out it's going to be three panels on one page you flip it over there's three more panels when you fold the brochure up then you get you know the uh, the title page and then you know and that's sort of the most important page that's the one that people see first and if they if they if they're intrigued if they are interested in that first panel then they will open the brochure and read more so here's uh, a little uh, a little guideline that I created to help you out with this so so what you can do is is you can take a piece of paper and and just turn it sideways and then divide it into three different strips right and on the far right over here that's going to be your front page so it's going to be your title it's going to be a very few amount of words it's going to have your headline or your your caption or your slogan to the reader and some kind of an image right so so you have to you ha- um you you really have to be um careful and y- and you have to create your document with intent and you have to be strategic with your design so you have your six panels so you don't need to cram everything into the into the first panel the first panel is really there to grab people's attention and what you want to do is you want to like picture your brochure on like in a doctor's office or in a hospital or in a library, a rec center, a community center of some kind, and there's like 20 or 100 brochures and all people can see is is the cover. So it's like the cover of a book or the cover of a movie or a, a poster, right? So it's it's got to grab your attention and that's, you know, that's really important. 
Moving to the left, the panel six is the contact information. That's, so this is where your name and community should go. Panel five is the second panel the reader will see. So they will um, they will look at um, uh, panel one, and then the second thing they'll see is this. So it needs to be visually engaging. Flipping it over. Um, so panels two, three, and four are you know these are important because people when when the, when the when the person opens up the brochure they're going to see um they they're, they're going to see panels 2, 3 and 4 like all at the same time so they, they you should use a similar format for each panel and so i call these like the content or the main panels um you're telling a story with your information. Uh, you know what can happen to people who are who are suffering with this issue. You're using point form writing and visuals, so you don't need to produce a whole lot of writing for for this activity, right? It's you you don't have to write very much, but you have to be very careful with your words. So that's you know it's it's a different kind of assignment, right? So you're not writing a, and you're not writing an essay. You're not writing a short story. You're just writing in really, uh, really punchy, kind of catchy point form style. All right, so even though I just said this is not an essay, uh, I still think it's important for you to to talk about uh, or for you to employ the the writing process when when you approach this assignment. So you need to do a bit of planning, right? So so planning step one is you are choosing a topic for your brochure and that's from one of the three topics provided or another one that you choose. So it's got to be an issue facing the characters in Jimmy Comes Home. So you can pick one of those three topics that we've set aside or you are choosing a topic of your own but just keep in mind that if you choose a topic of your own it's got to be one that at least you know one character um, in, in the novel I is facing, right? So, and, and if you're wondering about a topic, you can you can run it by me, and I'll help you out with that. And we can we can find the topic that works best for you. Okay. Then you fill out the first two sections of the KWL chart: know and and want to know. And then you do some research on your topic. Uh, complete the learned section of the KWL chart. So, so this assignment is going to ask, is going to require you to do some form of research. Research, okay? So you're going to need to, um, you're going to need to to go online, and and to do some research um, to to find out more about your selected topic, and then also. You you also want to find out some information about some agencies that can that can help the uh, help the person who's who's affected by this by this issue, right? So so you need to see which agencies are out there, and you need to understand the uh, the work that they're doing. So whether or not you use real organizations from your community or from this region, or you know operating somewhere in Canada. Or you create a fictionalized version of of those agencies. You should still, you know, go online and, and take care and do some research to to find out what's out there and to see who can help people and and how they help people. And some of those organizations that you look up may have brochures on their website, or you might want to just go into a an organization and look at one of their brochures. That's probably the best way to do this, but it's not it's not essential for the process. So you may have you may uh, you may or may not have um, completed a a KWL chart before, and so it's it's so K is no, W is want to know, and L is learned, right? So, so really, you know, th and this is a good model for for you know taking responsibility of your own learning, and just giving yourself a path forward, right? So it's like, what do I know about this topic? 
and you know what do I want to know about this about this topic right so so if we take um, you know um, the topic of staying in high school or you know um, you know getting you know getting an Ontario secondary school diploma you know what do you know about that topic right so you know it's like your grade 12 you have to get credits you have to attend a school of some kind you've got to write exams you've got to complete assignments And then maybe, you know, what you want to know is like, you know, places or organizations that help students graduate. So I guess, you know, like different paths to graduation. Different paths to graduation, um, and then maybe maybe you want to know like supports for students, right? You know, like uh, tutoring or online help. Yeah, so you just you write down what you know, write down what you want to know, and then go out there and, and do some research, right? So um, you can Google stuff, you can you could visit a school, you could phone a school, you could ask your teacher. And that's yours truly here, and I can I can help you out. So th there's there's a few options for you there, right? So, so what do you know? What do you want to know? And what have you? And what did you learn after you done your research? All right, step two of this process: you take a blank piece of paper, and then fold it into three equal sections. So. Start with the paper in landscape. So um, if you don't know what that means, we've got um, landscape is like, you know, think of like a landscape painting. So there's landscape and there's portrait. So landscape is when it is... Uh, it's long. It's the the long end is on the top and bottom, and the shorter end is on the sides, right? And portrait is where the the sides are the longest, and the top and bottom are the shortest. So put your paper into landscape. It should look like this. And you know, long end on the top and the bottom, and then you fold it into three equal into three equal sections. So what you're doing here is you're creating a rough copy or what we call a mock-up by putting down your ideas on the page. Please note this is not your final design. You are simply putting ideas on the page and you should reorganize them into a better version later. So this is really important, right? So, you know, I've talked a lot about how when students are given a writing assignment, sometimes they can struggle with just getting started and and they don't know where to take their assignment they don't know how to kind of um how to complete it and and sometimes we have a really hard time with that we don't we don't know where to start until we actually until we actually start somewhere um you know and so same same thing um, same thing 
with the writing assignments, you know, just just make up a a mock design, just sort of get some ideas on the page. So write down some words, some rough sketches of your visual elements. And so that's that's kind of what your your design should look like, right? You should um you'll you'll have your blank page in front of you and this will be your cover. You know, what do I want to have on my cover, my title page? This is going to be my uh, contact info and your community. This is uh, panel five, which is, you know, um, maybe a visual element. For the visual elements, you can you can Google stuff. You can find some images online, or you can, I if if you want, you can just draw them. Again, this is not an art course, so I'm not judging you on your ability to draw things. But um, you know, and then yeah, you can just simply sketch things out, and then you have panels two, three, and four, and you know these you know. It this should be, you know, you're telling a story with these panels, right? So this is going to be where, um, you know, most of your content is going to be here. So most of your content is going to be on these three panels, right? And you're going to tell a story uh, with those three panels. After you create your rough draft, let it sit for a few hours or a day. And then come back to your work with fresh eyes and try to find ways to make it even better. Make notes to yourself on the page to guide the creation of the final copy. Cross out words. You can add new words. Edit your images. Uh, put in new visuals, change the order of the content if necessary. And then you can use Microsoft Word, Publisher, um, Canvas, another great one you can use, um, or any other software to create a digital design. Take your rough copy with notes and markup and use that as a guide. Alternatively, you can use a fresh sheet of paper and carefully sketch out your final copy. So I'd really encourage you to do that. So do do a rough copy of your brochure, mark it up, change it, and then ha and then create a final one. And then you're going to save your digital file as a PDF or some other format and include that with your next submission to me or your DEC. And then you're going to photocopy, scan, fax, or take a picture of your brochure and include this with your next submission to me or your DEC. Right. So you got to find some way of of sending me your brochure. So just with our, our last bit of time here, I, I and I'll, I'll include these in in the YouTube description, um, or just email me or phone me if you want more information about these um, about these websites. So We'll start with this one. So this is um, Creative Block. So that's uh, B L O Q dot com, Creative Block dot com. And let's just make sure I'm sharing the right screen. Nope, that's not it. There we go. So this is the top ten creative tips to to make your brochure. Um, you know, amazing and, and grab people's attention. Do you want to make sure your brochure design draws attention? Well, look no further because we've asked the experts and put together a series of tips to elevate your brochure from good to great. And they also have a selection of great brochure templates, right? So, so this website's got um, 25 top brochure templates for designers, right? So again, you know, I, I've I've talked about the the concept of of templates and just seeing what's out there. Um, 
Yeah, these ones uh these ones you've you've uh these ones you've got to pay for, right? So uh I don't don't recommend doing that. And you can sort of get some ideas based on the images that they have that they provided, but yeah, um, we don't need to pay for the design. We just need to pay attention to their tips. All right, know your purpose before you start. Number one, okay, that that's the that's the best tip, and I've already mentioned it, but it 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 needs to be mentioned again. Know your purpose, right? So start by asking clients. Well, you 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 don't you're not going to have the opportunity to do market research, but you want to think about your audience, right? So think about your purpose. What are you trying to do, right? Um, and and so I just want to emphasize that you're trying to get someone's attention. You're trying to raise awareness about an issue and provide somebody with a path forward for for you know for getting better. Uh, limit your fonts, okay? So if if you're if you are if you're designing with a with a computer you might want to pick one or two fonts and just stick to those one or two fonts with with your writing and if you're creating with a pen and a pad then do your best to be consistent okay um, you know be consistent with how you write and, and try to make sure your writing sort of looks the same and is consistent and you know, use the same size lettering for your headers as you do for the regular, um, the regular uh, text in your in your in your brochure. I wouldn't worry so much about the kind of paper you work with. Um, get your copy right. Okay, so copy. When we're talking about advertising, copy is the words that we use. So. Even though you might only use like a hundred words in a brochure, or even like less than that, like fifty words, right? Or your headline, right? You you, you got you really got to pay attention, and you can't have any mistakes, right? Because your mistakes are going to stand out a lot more, because there's there's that much fewer text. So, pay close attention to your writing, and make sure that there's no mistakes, and make sure there's nothing y that needs to be um, needs to be changed. Um, put the readers first, right? So uh, a brochure is not for you. It's for your reader, okay? So um, think about them. Think about their experience of opening up your brochure. Use simple statements. Um, the c they, they, this website says, you want to know how to make a brochure that stands out, right? Well, sometimes the simplest ideas are the best, right? So... You want to be simple and to the point, and you know y you really want to, you know, deliver that message. A and very kind of simple, point form, straightforward writing. Okay. And just briefly, we'll have a look at the other website that I wanted to. This is by creativemarket.com. And again, I'll put these in the description. And if you're listening on the radio, I can I can uh, I can help you out with that. So these are 30 expert tips and templates. Um, let's have a look here. So um, what they've done here is they've is they've created a bunch of pre-designed templates that can make your job easier, right? So you you can have a look at some of these templates and just um so what you're looking for is the is the trifold, right? So um and again, they they want you to purchase it, but they they do have they do have examples like you can just look at it and you can get um some inspiration that way for for making your brochure okay so there so here we go we've got panel 6 that's the cover page right so it's got your it's got your headline um so that's that's panel 1 
Uh, panel six is your contact information. And uh, panel five over here is like some more information uh, about your brochure. And then here in the middle, this is your panels two, three, and four, right? So it, it's telling a story about, you know, um, it's telling a story about, you know, what you want to communicate. Keep it, and then if you keep it, if you look at this, they, they've got all the text in the middle here, all the text in the middle. They've got some icons up top. So you don't have to fill up the whole space. So that's, that's a really important point to, to keep in mind too, right? You don't need to fill up the entire space of the design, okay? You can just, you know, use a lot of space, right? And just, um, like, look at this one, right? Very minimalist, right? It's just, it, there's not a lot of information here. So sometimes less is more, okay? Sometimes you don't need to, you don't need to fill up every inch of page on the brochure, right? So, you know, just think about where you want to put your text. Think, think about where you want to put your, your images. They give similar advice as the first website. Know your objective, like the back of your hand. Know what you're doing. Know what you're doing. Know who you're trying to reach. Know who your audience is, and know how you're going to help them. So you got to think about all that beforehand. And if you know all of that, when it comes time to designing it, it's going to be a lot easier. Uh, know your customers. Same advice, right? So know your reader. Know what they what they want. Uh, try to imagine what they're into, what's going to grab their attention. Um, get straight to the point. That's great advice, too. It's a brochure, not a book, right? So get right down to the point. Don't waste any time. Um, avoid putting in all the information about your product or service. Too much information will confuse the reader. So, so again, less is more. Avoid big words, okay? The more complex the words you use, the less um, credibility you might receive, right? You don't have to impress your audience with big, fancy words, okay? You need to get to the point, okay? So for, so for your brochure, simple English is the best route to take. So that should be a relief to a lot of you out there, right? So it's, um, um t or sorry, to everybody out there, right? So you don't, you know, use simple point form, attention-grabbing writing, Put an emphasis on the headline, okay? So that's your, your cover page of your, of your brochure. Find a headline, find a slogan, find five or ten words that are going to really grab your reader's attention, and, and then take it from there. Add a call to action, right? So don't just list the dangers of something. Don't just, you know, give that person a call to action. Call this organization. Uh, talk to a friend, right? You know, it's give them things that they can do. Uh, give them a path. Give them a checklist. You know, do these five things. Um, yeah, so that's all the time we do have for today. Thank you for tuning in. If you have any questions about your brochure, please reach out to me, and I'll be more than happy to, happy, more than happy to help you with that. Thanks for tuning in.